Good job. See what happens? No. See what happens when you're stupid? See what happens? Huh? No. National security, get on the ground! Get on the ground! Get on the ground! No! Let me out of the box! Daddy, please let me out of the box! I'm stuck! Look at me! Look at me! Look at me! I'm stuck up here! I'm stuck up here! Look! Born on PC there, Sony. Hmm? You've done it for everything else. God of War. You've done it for uh, Horizon. Death Stranding. Why not Bloodborne? Hmm? I mean... It, oh, God. We, we get it, Nick. We get it. Oh, there he goes. Make contact. Yes. Yes. Uh, it almost is uh, like, uh, praise the sun. Uh, wrong, wrong franchise, though. That's... That's Dark Souls, not Bloodborne. I think it's kind of a reference to that because I mean, like, partway through the animation, technically your arms are like this, but uh, yes, partway, yeah. But Bloodborne uh, again, <laughs> this is from you know FromSoft. Basically, when Sony was trying to court them, and be like, hey, uh, it could be like this all the time. You know, we pay you to make games, you release them on our exclusively on our consoles you know that whole thing how it can work you know wouldn't that be good and then they looked at steam switch or the you know nintendo uh with and they also looked at uh xbox they're like now we're making a bunch of money from every other platform as well we appreciate it and you know we did this exclusively for you but we're gonna we're gonna seek greener pastures and it's sony how the timing is working out on this brother huh <laughs> oh, that's right. Because of Elden Ring, which... By the way, I'm kind of sick. Yeah. Nick had these grand plans he had worked out months and months in advance where he was going to be playing Elden Ring, and unfortunately, the sickness has taken him, and uh, he has been uh, you know, he's been afflicted by it and hasn't been able to... Uh, uh, hasn't been able to take part in any streaming of it. Well, we have a, a Maxor video, which every time we do one of these, it just, like, everybody loves it. They're just like, oh my gosh, I did another rat Maxor reaction. Which, thank you all very much for your suggestions and everything. This one was one that I think several people suggested both on YouTube and on Discord. So we're going to go ahead and get into it. This is the Bloodborne Review, Defeat Gods, Doll Waifu Simulator. Anyway, here we go. The video has spoilers. Bloodborne is a Lovecraftian horror RPG that no one understands by definition, where the player is free to attack hordes of human children uh, at will and consume their innards. If that in-depth and engaging anti-baby gameplay appeals to you, keep listening because it gets worse. In this game, you play as John Bloodborne, a foreigner incapable of speech without the use of sign. Huh? John Bloodborne. <laughs> yes. Sign language and stricken with Habsburg disease, comes to the ancient city of London, seeking treatment for the sins of his cousins. In doing so he will begin hallucinating talking dolls, spider people, and the great <laughs> journeying further. John Bloodborne becomes conscripted into the service of a gay elder god and the 60 year old man he keeps as a pet, and is given the ultimate task of killing an invisible infant in order to cure his anemia. To accomplish said Herculean task, the player must journey through dark forests, terrifying nightmares, and the meth ridden alleyways of a post Brexit Britain, slaying monsters, exploring, and tricking women into being impregnated by gods so you can consume the child. This game is an excellent realization of a Metroidvania with something new around every corner. A great action RPG which pits you against insurmountable odds and extreme challenges and has a gripping story and lore about discovering the Eldritch truth. So if you can, play it yourself because I'm not going to hold back on the details. It's no secret that my reviews are entertainment first, so I don't suggest using me as genuine advice. <laughs> However, most people can't play this game, ever, because you have to buy a $400 magical box sold by the wizard Sony in order to experience it. And even then, you get to see it in an amazing 30 frames per second with no anti-aliasing. Port this game to PC, I beg of you. In yes! Yes! 100% I agree. Why has this not happened yet? In fact, because I can assume Sony that a lot of people it. watching this video will- Huh? Because Sony published it. I know, but Sony literally paid for, like, like God of War to be made. They paid for all these other games to be made, and they allowed them to be published. This is the last one they're going to let go of because it's the main one that still sells their consoles. Jesus Christ.
guys basically never play the game but keep watching because i'm hilarious and original do that and i can give you the full or you know what how about you release a patch on the ps5 to basically get rid of all those restrictions you know include anti-aliasing and give a 60 fps is that too much to ask for sony i'm, I'm sorry am i demanding too much of you you multi-billion dollar company jesus christ Unfiltered, uncensored, unsubstantiated, and unsportsmanlike experience that is Bloodborne. <laughs> the gameplay is what makes this game great, and the easiest well, way to describe it is simple but on complicated. On a simple level, your baby brain is responsible for only two tasks, dodging and hitting. And dodging in this game renders you temporarily invincible. Sounds easy, right? Wrong. Because every single enemy is adjusted to keep pace with you. Basic enemies are basically able to whoop your ass into fucking non-existence. Every encounter, therefore, is tense and engaging. When you kill someone, it's because you were faster and had more meth than they did. On a complicated level, you have had more meth than later. <laughs> yeah. And normally bullets hurt people, but in London, bullets are a suggestion, like the Geneva Convention. Pretty Here much. in England, it's all about the knife bins. Except when you shoot somebody mid-attack, you gain the mystical and arcane ability to plunge your fist through their ribcage like Mortal Kombat and rip out their heart, which is considered rude and a slight annoyance. This extends to behind them if you charge an attack, which sometimes causes you to reach up a pig's asshole and rip out the prostate like fruit by the floor. I was wondering if you mentioned that. That is definitely the most unfortunate thing about their choice of, like, critical attack in this game. Yeah. Because when you do it to the pigs, it literally looks like you're just straight up prostate examining them. Like, it's fucking weird. Hey, man. Spit roast that motherfucker. Optimal farming route for currency in this game is called Murgo's Pig Fisting Route. See, I changed the webpage. And in this route, you sneak up behind this guy and do him the dirty. Then, entice these two swindler bastards to be mauled to death by members of Organization 13. Repeat 50 times. <laughs> Every single weapon in the game has two different modes with two different movesets. And transforming between them gives you special attacks in addition to running attacks, plunging attacks, 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 On a theoretical physicist level, your character memorizes squiggly lines and fridge art created by gods for passive bonuses that work regardless of weaponry my favorites are more money more money and more money they stack finally on a meta theoretical <laughs> chiropractic level every weapon is customizable with different gem slots that give differing effects for your attacks and there are different types that can literally change all of the stats of the weapon like making a fucking spear do more damage based off of intelligence there's definitely more and a lot of strategy in how you level up your character but i assume that you know how to level up in a fucking video game but with all this combat prowess you i don't may know be wondering, that's pretty hard. Maxor, who are these if you can't tell, I'm a, game, I'm a actually, games journalist. Oh my gosh, that's too hard to know how to level up. If in a you video don't game. really know what you're doing in any Soulsborne game, uh, except Sekiro, because it doesn't have the same leveling system as this. Yeah, true. Uh, it's pretty possible, especially early on, to make a very non-functional build. Yeah. Um, because a lot yeah. of people, like, for one of the biggest mistakes I see people make a lot of the times is in Dark Souls, they will infuse their weapon with a stone without having the stats mm -hmm. to support that infusion, and they'll actually make their weapon worse for the stats that they have. Yeah, you, you sort of have to, like, balance yourself out uh, in order to make that the most effective that's why the Weapon. easiest way to go for a build for beginners in Souls games that I always recommend is to stay away from infusing a weapon and always just do the standard plus one, plus two, plus three, all the way up to plus nine upgrade and either pick strength or dex or both and go for the weapons that scale off of those. I I went for both. I like and if strength you and dex. really, like really want to be a newbie... Like, you know, try hard, then try sorcery or faith build as well. But mm -hmm. those are a lot harder and you have to, they're not a lot harder, but you have to be more careful about how you're building your character if you want to do those. Yeah. 
abominations that you're fighting on screen. Well, to learn that much, we're going to have to delve into the lore. So buckle your britches, bitches, because this shit is wild. If I say something questionable, just accept it as fact. I can be trusted. 60 years ago, 20 rowdy college students took their education extremely seriously because they found woman Cthulhu. She was just in a portable toilet downstairs. Also, because they were bored, they beat to death a god of the sea with some bats, but that's a story for later. It turns out the entire world is ruled literally, and created yeah, by a race of uh, <laughs> Literally, yeah, it was in the DLC. Yeah. It was a story for later. <laughs> Elder gods beyond human comprehension called hey, the Great I have Ones. That picture Figuring on my this out, ground. they got Cthulhu's blood and were like, we can make a religion out of this. Because it turns out <laughs> blood can heal people, which Love is the really reference. good due to all the knife crime. So everyone starts drinking it a little too much and they get the money to build 36 cathedrals. But it turns out eventually the blood turns you into a werewolf. So the church hires a guy named German to go fight the beasts with an organization known as the Hunters. But there's too many beasts, so he gives up. Now the knife crime is increased even more and German sort of goes insane and creates a life size doll of one of his students who is an eight-foot-tall Amazonian. He also canonically has sex with it. The moon god, for some reason, kind of takes notice of this and is like, all right, listen, I'm building a suicide squad. I will bring your waifu to laifu if you serve me for all time as my slave. German reasonably thinks that this is a great deal and is imprisoned in a dream. This is where you come in. See, the moon god assassinates baby gods for fun, but needs a hitman to go into the real world to do it since he's confined to the ninth dimension. So in addition to fighting all manner of giant beasts and uncovering dark secrets, the true aim of this game is to commit infanticide. There's enough bullshit here to fill tax legislation. So comment your own Jesus poorly summarized Christ. Bloodborne lore below. And for the rest of us non-shills, we have ample time to explain more of what makes this game great. Yes, you have been jinxed. I am talking about bosses before I talk about the levels. In most video games, bosses cap off areas, but in Bloodborne, areas are preambles to a dick flatting, and nothing will challenge your skill in quite the same way. Except for the goddamn Witches of Hemwick, who were placed into the game for disability access. You can probably tell that Bloodborne is a hard game. We don't even know if a games journalist can beat it, but it's hard in a fair way that tests your- <laughs> Thank you for calling that out, dude. Skills and reaction time, except for Lawrence, but I'll get back to Lawrence later. What sets this game's reaction? bosses apart Somebody is that the reaction. challenge makes it feel like you're a really small dude jabbing a toothpick into a building-sized deer demon. So yeah, I would be impressed if he killed that. But not only that, unlike okay, Dark so Souls, see, every here, single he, boss... He, the, the point he just made is the point I've always made to people about why I like Dark Souls. Uh-huh. And it's the same reason that people who can't get into it hate it. And that is Dark Souls is realistic in the aspect of if you were a dude in a suit of armor with a fucking sword and you went to fight a giant dragon, what do you think's going to happen nine times out of ten? I would say you're going to get your ass flayed. Exactly. Like, the dragon's going to fucking eat you, burn you alive, mm -hmm. fucking smush you, decimate your fucking ass. Yeah. Also, and you have to work to gain the knowledge to become a badass dragon slayer. And that's cool because in other games, they just fucking give it to you. But Dark Souls and Soulsborne is not a game that gives it to you. And like, literally, like you are this little dude jamming a toothpick into like a big ass fucking monster, like yeah. Lovecraftian monster. So, of course, it's going to take several fucking tries to actually get it right and manage to kill the damn thing. <laughs> yeah. It's like, if I don't walk in, if I walk into the room and the boss doesn't just immediately explode, zero out of ten. That's basically what I assume most games so By the way, like, even though I've beaten Bloodborne um, three times now, mm -hmm. and everybody watched me do it on stream, and they saw this happen to me on stream too, Lady Cthulhu still fucking wrecks my ass consistently, like, every time. Mm. Like, she is evil. <laughs> yes. Uh, also... The reason I freeze-framed on this specific part here is because I saw a mod the other day that was absolutely just cursed, and it made me sort of hate the internet, but also love the internet again. You know, it's love-hate relationship. That's how it goes. Um, they put... It, they also changed the name of it, too. It was called The Great Shiba Inu, and it had the hush stick, <laughs> which was the baseball bat. Yeah. The wiffle ball bat, and it... I'm like, you gotta be fucking kidding me. <laughs> and it, and whenever the sword hit you, it made the... Poof. So, <laughs> God, <laughs> son of a bitch, internet. I hate shield. you. I hate you, but at the same time... Ugh. Thank you. Oh. 
single boss reacts meaningfully to how you attack them. Large beasts can have their bones cracked and their tendons wound into a slinky. Bone boys can be knocked over and have their marrow shaped. And human enemies will wince and recoil when they see your height difference. As well, every <laughs> boss punishes you for cowardice and actively discourages backpedaling with their forward momentum, causing every fight to be an elaborate dance with a thrilling back and forth. Unless you're fighting Brom, who is the really hungry caterpillar if he had a legion of arachnid slaves who threw their heads underground like ostriches. We don't talk about him. And while we're on the subject of bad bosses, this motherfucker, let me tell you something, the humanoid bosses in this game are paradoxically the most dangerous. But Mikalash is a psychological hazard that will hurt you personally. This boss literally feels like cut content because the fight centers around chasing him and his direction depends on RNG, making him an actual speedrun killer. When you corner him, he uses one attack and then you chase him again where he gains the power to insta-kill you. God forbid you're hit by it because that's 10 minutes gone. Here's a tip. Save up 10 poison knives and steal from your family if you must. Then wait until he jumps down this hole, poison him repeatedly, and watch him spaz the fuck out until death. You will yep. thank me. But as a result of everyone who isn't Miko shit, conquering that way the boss not in this game fast, is... Though. Well, it's, it's faster than the RNG. Oh, yeah. The fastest way is to just get good and kill him on one try. <laughs> fair. <laughs> fair, but again, you know, it, it's just a lot of people hate the annoying I dash think, of chasing him. Like, like, like his, I had my time with him. I, I could see how uh, people could have had some bullshit happen with his one shot, but I've literally only died to him one time in the three times I played through the game. So, hmm. I think I died to one of his puppets once because I got locked into a corner, but like him himself, I actually only got killed by him like one time. Yeah. He's not that bad. He's, uh, he's not, by bosses. all means not the worst. For me, the Blood Starved Beast was the hardest one for me. It's because definitely the hardest early boss in the game, for sure. That, that was my first I mean. brick wall I hit for Oh, the me game. too. I died to him like ten times, I'm just yeah, like... Until I figured out you could summon, uh... Is it, uh... You summon the dude. I forgot uh, his fucking I forget name. his name, yeah. too. Uh, but... I want to say Logarius, but Logarius is the guy that he follows. But you summon him, and basically that dude turns into a hit sponge. Yeah. And if you want him to. But me... I eventually beat it without him, and I was just like, I was just like the happiest guy in the world after I finally beat it. One of the other things that helps a lot that you won't know early game too is if you buy all of Gasquin's armor and put it on, it gives you the highest poison resist you can get at that point in the game. So, Very nice. Since he's a poison boss. Yes. The closer but, you get uh, to the way, him, the more deadly. straight up evil to have a poison boss that early in a game like that. But uh, yeah. Code Vein one ups Bloodborne because the second boss in the game is a poison boss, and the Bloodstar Beast is like canonically like the fourth or fifth boss. Uh, no, um, he's technically in terms of the mandatory bosses, he's only the second boss. Oh, okay. So uh, he's still only the third boss. Like either way, so you got Gasquin. And then you got the mm -hmm. Blood Star Beast right after that, but you also have the Cleric Beast as the optional first boss as well. Yeah, the Cle well, the Cleric Beast was the first one that I fought and beat. Then Gasquin. And then, yeah, I think Blood Star Beast was that. Okay, so he's third. He mm -hmm. is technically third. Second or third is absolutely rewarding on a level that other games cannot match. It's only because the odds are stacked against you in ways that don't feel bullshit most of the time that conquering them is the main reason I play, and their fights are undoubtedly the best I've ever done in video games. But that isn't most of the time in the game. In fact, a lot of your time is spent exploring the areas, so let's get into that. Lesson 1 in area design. Where the fuck am I going? Exploration is the name <laughs> of the game, except it's called Bloodborne. Only this time, you don't bring smallpox and kill 20 million people. We're looking at a solid 10 this time, because the main enemies in this game are British townspeople. It's how the developers made sure you didn't feel bad about killing them. The plague of beasts in fucking London causes people's teeth to become beast-like, makes you aggressive at night, and slurs your speech. So it's up to you to stop. You're not wrong. A lot of the guys in this just speak British gibberish. Some of them just laugh at Rand like, ha ha ha! What would you say that for? Stop them as a hunter should. If you don't look up where to go next in this game, good fucking luck. People get lost all the time. Get used to it. This game doesn't do exploration like, oh, look, there's loot in this hallway. My dopamine's gonna go crazy. That's baby shit. This is daddy's exploration where you find a route back to a place you were in 10 hours ago. And I hope you weren't expecting a mini map or any map. Every single hallway is a rabbit hole of discovery and your hand isn't held. Case in point, Cathedral Ward is a level but feels like a hub area because it connects to fucking everything. And where you start the game is in the middle of a loop-de-loop. -loop 
loop involving torturous experimentation. Just look at the fucking map of this game. Everything overlaps. And yes, there is a level called Nightmare Lecture Hall, and no, it does not connect to the Altar of Despair, although you would think that. Fittingly, the Lecture Hall is the smallest area, and more fittingly, 90% of the combat is graduates throwing cum at you. The game also oh. has two completely <laughs> secret areas. It's like a fucking frat house that you would not find without the internet. I would tell you how to enter, but I don't want to do calculus. And what you get at the end? Upper Cathedral Ward is legitimately a horror area in a game loved for its combat, because it's filled with enemies who act out my greatest fears. Stealing currency permanently gives me fucking chills every time I talk about it. Castle Kanehurst is proof that From Software hates us all, since the best area in the entire game requires you to go to the Field of Corn in Ohio and trek down Waldo. But it's worth it to invade the house of that parasitic queen dwelling in her demented castle, so that she may feel the wrath of the proletariat. All we have to do is kill Prince God. Philip, who guards the way as an eternal lich. On top of this, there are numerous NPCs and NPC quest lines spread throughout the world, all with a series of interactions with each other depending on location and timing. For instance, you could direct nuns, prostitutes, and Prince Philip to a church run by a lonely black sludge, then perform enough blood transfusions to send the nun into a yandere rage. Or you could direct them to the nice woman who runs the clinic down the street who only wants to help and assist others. Then, take a strange path through the forest into her clinic to discover that she's been experimenting on all of them in order to create the Blue Man group. And if you want, <laughs> you can take the Awesome. Love that. Or away from her schizophrenic ass and eat it. The sky's the limit in Bloodborne quest lines. And you know what my favorite quest line is? The one where you descend into literal hell, complete with eternal punishment, insanity, and femboy fishing. The scariest of them all. I'm, of course, cool. talking about the DLC. The only DLC for this yes. game. And if you play the through Bloodborne, you have to play through the DLC. I'm not giving you a fucking choice. So to learn why, you should play the best expansion ever made since Spore Galactic Adventures. <laughs> Come with me on this amazing journey to Find the secrets of the Bloodborne, the old hunters. Oh. I want you to imagine hell. Now imagine hell written by H.P. Lovecraft. It will be filled with squids, immigrants, and air conditioning. This DLC has none of that, except the squids. For you see, those college kids from the lore section of the video were built fucking different. They experimented on an entire village and possibly beat up a god of the sea so fucking bad that her consciousness in the ninth dimension died. We spent an entire game killing an infant and these guys somehow killed the milf god. But anyways, in the process of this, it cursed them and all of the hunters to be doomed to a hell upon death, where they will hunt in a bloodthirsty rage without rest for all eternity, indistinguishable from a political subreddit. Case in point, this is Ludwig. He's the first boss of the DLC and has a reputation for causing refunds. Not because he's yeah. bad, but because so, he's too uh, good for you. Go no, check for out the live stream of my playthrough of Bloodborne, uh -huh. in which I did the DLC for the first time, and watch what happens when I get to Ludwig. Because uh, I've had at least one person be very mad at me when I told them, like, they were like, you can go fuck yourself. Because I happened to uh, somehow kill Ludwig on my first try. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> ooh. Well, there you go. That's so, a that's kind of funny to me. Spicy. Like, causing refunds. <laughs> I killed him first try. <laughs> uh, Whoops. Like, all of a sudden... I just can't I hear like, like game bad, me no like, me angry. <laughs> I just hear that in the back of my head every time. It's like I, people mention like the old hunters because of just like how hard it is, and then all of a sudden Nick's I can just only back here just like <laughs> first try. The fucking people that refunded over him when they got if they had have actually gotten past him and gotten to the to last like, boss of the DLC. Yeah, fuck. It's the last boss of the DLC. I'm pretty sure he kicked my ass about 13 or 14 times before I beat him. Yeah. It, I, He's again. fast and terrifying. Anyway, back to first phase is as difficult for me as realizing that Golden Corral is not actually a real corral. But like every restaurant except Golden Corral, the rewards at the end are delicious because his second phase is even harder. Now, I'm not going to lie, this DLC has four bosses and three of the hardest bosses I have ever fought in any video game ever. So, your ass will be clenched the entire time, and the fact that he's the third hardest is fucking concerning. Some people tell me, Maxor, your videos have gotten me through tough times because they made me laugh. But like this boss, you are the one who 
who is truly overcoming these challenges. And I believe in your ability to beat both of them. King Boss Lightning Round. <laughs> the DLC has many such cases of amazing bosses, including Lady Maria, who is the basis for German's extremely creepy eight-foot-tall doll fetish. She but we'll get back to that. And too. Orphan of... Uh, say again? She's pretty difficult, too. I think she's it's probably who he was referring to as the second hardest one. Cause, who was born from the literal dead body of a god. If you enjoy the sensation of being beaten to death with a sharpened placenta, this is the fight for you. And as with everything that From Software makes, they threw in a boss that they didn't really finish and called it a day. I'm of course talking about Lawrence, which is a very mundane name for a fire monster locked in hell. Take my advice, don't fight Lawrence, you only lose a part of yourself. Since this boss fights you by dropping off his own legs and then violently vomiting and shitting lava everywhere. I've always wanted my game about dynamic dodging and elaborate fencing to be reduced to shitty area denial like it's Team Fortress 2. To wrap things up, the music of this game is pretty good, but the DLC music is fucking insane. I don't know what it is about Japanese composers being able to make better symphonies than the continent that invented them, but just take a listen. Holy shit, I am alive right now. Have you ever thought, as I do, <laughs> I'm alive right now too, buddy. Just too good that you would really rather be Video playing a shittier version of the that, game, uh, such as the engagement uh, you know, of the Chalice Dungeons. Sony Music I, of in course, Japan likes oh, to claim right, Bloodborne Sony. music for shit. Sony. Not claim strike. Damn, Sony, I hate you sometimes. So they're fine, probably, except for half of them, because Bloodborne has an optional system of infinite dungeon generation for all of those who wish to break free of the shackles of good level design. Let's talk about how, and more importantly, why. Yeah, the challenge. First of all, Bloodborne has a system of dungeons that everyone shares and dungeons that hey, are random. Phoenix For my Wright. footage, I played the shared dungeons that you can be guaranteed the pay you with this on screen is Phoenix mandatory. One of the biggest the strengths of Say what? It's my favorite Phoenix Wright music playing in the background right now, the cornered theme. Nice. Bloodborne is the ability to have interesting and challenging enemy encounters gently rubbed with the bloodstained hands of Miyazaki. But I don't think I have to explain to you how randomizing almost every encounter in the game could be imbalanced. But fortunately, most enemies you encounter in the Chalice Dungeons are new to spare British people your wrath. So you instead fight SCP-96. But why are we here? It turns out that the entire city of London was built on a Celtic burial ground, an ancient civilization called the Tumerians who discovered the healing powers of blood and then mysteriously disappeared. Wow, I wonder what happened. This is all cool in theory, but the reality is that most of the time you fight the same four enemies, and the first three dungeons can be replaced by Simon Says. My cat literally wouldn't notice. The Chalice Dungeons are so <laughs> forgotten that the developers use them to put joke enemies into the game. My favorite is the man who aggressively rolls at you, stark naked, wearing only his Nikes. The uniqueness also extends to the bosses, and they're actually pretty cool, like Two Marian Descendant, Watchdog, and the Three Overweight Men. Do you remember that basic enemy from like two levels? He he is the boss now. Rom, he is the boss again. The only thing stopping me from throwing myself into a wood chipper is the fact that Miklash isn't back. And if you're going Thank to have God. replays, you probably want to make sure that they're actually good. In fact, the bosses are so fucking imbalanced that the watchdog fight is primarily comprised of instant kill attacks. I beat Sekiro backwards on a keyboard, and this shit is too fucking much. Now, normally that would be all, but the dungeons go deeper. What we have discussed so far is merely the surface, and there is a much darker <laughs> syndicate lying just below. These places you must never venture, for they are the save edit dungeons, whereby through wizardry, the community are able to conjure up deep, dark chasms and share them with the rest of the world. Of these secrets, there are only two that I shall reveal to you, and the first is the Cum Dungeon. Yes, you heard that correctly and clearly. The Cum Dungeon is the name of the most optimal farming route ever conceived by the fucking cricket people who do this shit, whereby the player <laughs> enters the chasm of place name and watches as a high-level boss yeets itself off a cliff. Murgo's Pig Fisting Route can give you 10,000 Echoes, this gives 83,000. And if you thought that that sorcery was bad, it gets much worse. You can insert anything from the game files by save editing a Chalice Dungeon. Anything. This includes cut and unfinished content from the game that the developers Holy forgot shit. to delete. Like this doggo who attacks you with invisible lightning. Overall, the Chalice Dungeons are bad. They're not actually very fun to play, and yet I love them. Everyone loves them because they allow us to further explore a long dead game with the help of a passionate community. Now before we sign off, I know what you're thinking. Maxor, what about the multiplayer? That I would love to talk about with all the footage I have, but it's dead. If this game releases on PC, 
and it better. Then I will talk about the <laughs> multiplayer extensively. And finally, this game and this video would not be complete if I didn't talk about the hunter's dream. After all the combat, the battles, and the difficulty of this game, it's nice to have a place to recharge, purchase items, upgrade weapons, and watch as it violently burns to the ground. This is where you'll find German slowly wasting away as his soul remains captive for an eternity, and his doll waifu that he sold his existence to be with. She talks to you, levels you up, offers you advice, and German says you're allowed to have sex with her. When I fell down and felt defeated, she was there to pick me up. When I emoted at her randomly, she pretended to be impressed. And she was there, graciously standing in the background of this one shot that I took of myself. She is our waifu now, and the game is perfect and complete because she is in it. Now excuse me as I engage in the supplementary lore material. Should we get the game? Yes, absolutely. I am biased. In fact, you should physically enter Sony's headquarters and- Rule 34. Rule 34. Rule 34. Well, of course. God damn it. And demand that it be ported to PC. I will be right there with you. Tasers will not stop me. I would like to thank the corrupt hackers and politicians funneling money into this channel directly from the taxpayer. If you would like to contribute your funds accrued through extensive federal government corruption, you can head to my Patreon <laughs> to learn more. I would also like to thank the kind denizens of the Mythbuster <laughs> Smut Discord who sent me half the memes in this video. And as always, thank you for watching. <laughs> smut bust smut busters I, I think that would be a that would, a better name for that so world, rule 34 is not surprising to me when the character is already mm -hmm. kind of attractive so Ugh. rule 34 just gets weird when people are like i'm going to make a gloom sexy from pokemon <laughs> like no it's like it, why uh i don't know dude I don't know. God have mercy. Holy shit. And when people make extremely weird fucked up stuff like, I'm going to ship Mario with Luigi. And it's like, that's fucking incest. <laughs> <laughs> oh. There's also one I've been made aware of because of certain people whom I don't really talk to much anymore for reasons um there's one set of rule 34 that they showed me and it's one reason why we don't talk anymore it's called the futa uh rule 34 oh yeah you didn't know about that oh, oh gosh it hurts every every like hot female character that i've ever liked in anime Video games, just oh yeah, they've been draw drawn with a dick somewhere. Yeah, I, you you do you guys, but again, there's days I just hate the internet. Oh, so yeah, it's definitely weird. Oh, definitely, it's a weird place. Anyway, so yeah, this was a uh, this was uh, Max Sor's Bloodborne review. Defeat Gods Doll Waifu Simulator. Uh, yeah, this was a uh, this was a lot of fun, and I really look forward to uh, to uh, watching more from him. I mean, I know that everyone wants us to watch his uh, his uh, Yakuza Zero one, but unfortunately, Nick's still playing it. Mm -hmm. And there's other ones though. There's other. Uh, I know he just did the Monster Hunter World one, which is interesting. Uh, the D Devil May Cry 5 one definitely piques my interest. As well as the Doom Eternal one. The Doom Eternal one, I will probably check out after this one. But yeah, man, I've beat Doom Eternal and Devil May Cry 5. I just haven't beat Yakuza 0. I don't want to see spoilers for the, all the crazy shit that happens in the game. So. Yeah. Hmm. Well, everyone, we hope that you all have uh, enjoyed. And we hope that uh, you all will continue to tune in uh, if y'all want to see more from max or click his name in the title of the video and if you want to see more from us hit that subscribe button ring that bell leave a like please it helps the videos out a lot and uh yeah we would we would definitely greatly appreciate it so until next time everybody signing off i'm nate i am nick we'll see you then everybody peace out